Let's take a look at the intermolecular forces for NF3, nitrogen trifluoride. So the first thing we need to do is figure out whether there are any ions present. So as we look at NF3 here, we can see nitrogen and fluorine are both nonmetals. So we have covalent bonds. So we're not going to have any ions present. And there's no negative or positive after it either. So no ions are involved here. So no. So let's cover up this part right here. Next, we want to know whether we have any polar molecules. So is NF3 a polar molecule? If you look at the difference in electronegativity between the nitrogen and the fluorine here, so nitrogen right here, 3.04, fluorine 3.98, fairly big difference in electronegativity. So we would expect that NF3, that would be a polar molecule. That's also because if we look at the Lewis structure, we can see that we have this lone pair here. So that's going to push these three fluorine atoms down, give us a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry. So it's not a symmetrical molecule either. So we expect we'd have a polar molecule. So yes. At this point, we would look whether hydrogen atoms are bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. But there aren't any hydrogen atoms, so no. So we end up with dipole-dipole forces as the intermolecular force for NF3. Note we'd also have London dispersion forces as well. So that's how you find the intermolecular forces for NF3, nitrogen trifluoride. We have dipole-dipole, and we do have London dispersion forces as well. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.